everyone. Thank you so much for joining us today. I hope that everyone's doing well, um, whether it's your morning or your evening. And I'd like to get started today. Um, we're going to be talking about living in Pittsburgh, which is one of America's most livable cities. So we have a lot of tips to share with you um, before you arrive to Duquesne. So I'd like to introduce my co-host, Orja. Go ahead and, and introduce yourself and tell us a little bit about Pittsburgh. Hello everyone, my name's Orja and I'm currently pursuing my master's in child psychology at Duquesne University and I will be graduating this December 2020. I'm originally from India, but I was born and raised in Kuwait. I moved to Pittsburgh about 10 months ago. Um, Pittsburgh's amazing. You will see a variety of seasons, rain, sunny. Um, the trees are beautiful right now. Um, and I hope this webinar is fun for you and we can answer all and any questions as you may have. Thank you, Orja. And I'm Megan Evangelist. I graduated from Duquesne. Um, I also teach a class in the School of Education in ESL TESOL and I'm the International Admissions Coordinator. So I am originally from Pittsburgh and I absolutely love living here because even though it's a large city, it feels like it's a small town in a sense. So there's always things to do and really, really kind and helpful people. Um, I love attending cultural events. I love going to museums and concerts. There's also outdoor activities like hiking and swimming. And I also really love the location of du Duquesne because it's downtown, so it's extremely convenient. So I'm going to start today by talking about living in Pittsburgh. So you'll see the picture on the left is our campus, and then it's right next to downtown Pittsburgh. So that is the photo on the right. So when you're on our campus, you're able to easily walk to this location. Um, we're looking at the point in Pittsburgh. So studying and working in Pittsburgh is very safe. Um, our campus is self-contained and they say it's like a park um, because it's very beautiful, lots of trees, um, and everything that you have in our campus is just an extension of the city. So it's very, very walkable, only a few minutes away. So we are located on the East Coast of the United States. So if you're interested in traveling and seeing other cities, we're very closely located to Washington, D.C., Philadelphia, New York, um, all of those cities are drivable. And also our international airport is only about 30 minutes um, away from campus. So you're able to hop on a plane um, to go to other cities as well. So I just wanted to share a quote from Abby. She is a Duquesne alumna. She graduated um, last year. And she said she likes the location of Duquesne University because it's located right next to downtown Pittsburgh where you can easily get to everything you need in walking distance. Duquesne has a beautiful campus that you will really enjoy the university atmosphere. And you can also see the uh, Pittsburgh city landscape from campus. So we do have very distinct four seasons in Pittsburgh. So you'll see in the top left-hand corner, um, a photo of the point at springtime, whenever um, the trees start to bloom again, the weather starts to become a little bit warmer. Um, this is usually our rainy season in Pittsburgh. Then summer is the top right corner. Um, this is where uh, the Weather, of course, gets a bit hotter. Um, it's a little bit humid in the city. So you'll want to wear your warm weather clothes during these months. Um, down in the left-hand corner, we are currently in fall. Um, this is when the leaves on the trees change. The weather starts to be a little bit cooler. Um, and you see um, that people start to kind of go indoors more in fall. 
And then finally, winter time. Um, it does get cold in Pittsburgh. Um, it snows, we have ice. Um, so a lot of uh, students who are coming from a warm weather climate think about buying their clothes once they arrive to Duquesne to Pittsburgh, because if you're from a really warm place, the clothing probably isn't um, as warm as you would like it. So wait until you get here um, to buy a, a warm coat or boots because you'll be able to find things here. So we are known as the city of neighborhoods. Um, there are, I think, over 90 neighborhoods in the city of Pittsburgh, and it's really fun to get to know each individual neighborhood. So for instance, from Duquesne, you can walk um, through downtown to the Strip District. And these are some photos on the left of, you can go shopping. They have a lot of different um, grocery stores and markets. Um, some are outdoor, some are indoor, uh, as well as restaurants. Um, you can see this man painting a mural here. So a lot of art is also in the Strip District. And then over to the right is Oakland. Um, this is where you'll find the Carnegie Museums, um, such as the Art Museum, the Natural History Museum. And this is also a really popular location because in Oakland, you'll also find the University of Pittsburgh and Carnegie Mellon University. So again, we're walkable from Duquesne to Oakland. You can also easily hop on a city bus um, to get from Duquesne to Oakland, where there are quite a lot of students. So the next neighborhood I really like to go to is Shadyside. Um, you'll see some of these pictures on the left. The houses are really beautiful. There's a great shopping district there. Um, there are a lot of students living in Shadyside because it's a very nice, um, convenient part of town to get on the bus um, and get to Duquesne. So I would recommend if you're looking for places to live, to look at Shadyside. And then over to the right is Squirrel Hill. So this is one of my favorite neighborhoods um, because there are a ton of different restaurants. Um, if you're interested in eating cuisine from around the world, Squirrel Hill is where you would want to be looking in Pittsburgh. So we are, as Duquesne students, in close proximity to everything you would need. Great restaurant, shopping, entertainment. Um, there are a lot of museums very close by to us, um, such as the Andy Warhol Museum. Um, and then we also have a lot of nightlife happening. So it's just all walkable from campus, which is very convenient for the students. So I like to include these pictures um, on the right because we do have a really fun amusement park called Kennywood Park. It's one of the oldest um, amusement parks in the US. So this is within the city of Pittsburgh and also the um, zoo and aquarium is a great place to go and walk around. Um, they even have zip lining. So Pittsburgh is a big sports town. You may have heard of some of the, um, the major league sports that happen in our city. So we have the Pittsburgh Steelers, which is American football, and they play at Heinz Field. We also have the Pittsburgh Pirates that play at PNC Park. And then finally, the Pittsburgh Penguins that play at PPG Arena. So the hockey team, the Pittsburgh Penguins, they are just steps away from Duquesne's campus. So all you do is leave our campus, walk down the hill, and the arena is right there. So there are also concerts there um, at the PPG Arena, which is really great. So finally, um, Lynn is a current student. She's in our pharmacy program. And she's from uh, Vietnam, and she said she really likes Pittsburgh because it's a small, beautiful, and friendly city. Everyone I meet here is really warm-hearted, and they always are willing to help when she's in need. She said Pittsburgh is a great place to live and study because the cost of living is affordable for students. Students, especially those who prefer a friendly and peaceful environment, will enjoy studying at Duquesne and enjoy this city. So I think that's a great point to make that Pittsburgh is very affordable, and that's what makes us 
one of the most livable cities in the U.S. So it is um, very different than moving to an expensive city like New York City or Los Angeles or Seattle. Um, the cost of living is much lower here, so you'll find that rentals are lower. Um, going out to eat will cost you less money. So it's a great place for students because of this. Okay, so I'll turn it over to Orja to talk about life on campus. Um, I've lived on campus for about six months on and off. I had the opportunity to live in um, Duquesne Towers and McCroy Hall. Um, on Duquesne campus, we have seven living learning centers. They include Assumption Hall, Brodier Hall, which is like an apartment style housing, um, we have the Des Places Hall, the St. Anne's Hall, which is exclusively for freshman students. We have the St. Martin's Hall, um, the Duquesne Towers, and the McCroy Hall. The best part about these living learning centers is that each center has its own um, thing to look at. Um, Duquesne Towers has Hogan Dining Hall, which is the main eating center, and most Almost all of the learning centers provide a small room with computers and a printer to access any notes you might need um, at any point. Um, but if not, the library is extremely convenient at a walking distance, the Gumberg Library, where everything's available. But the seven living learning centers make it extremely um, convenient for students to access um, um, things in the building itself. Every floor or every building has its own laundry room. Um, we also have something called the Power Center um, where you can work timelessly. It is equipped. Um, they have a lot of equipments um, and you just need your ID to swipe and then you can enter. They also provide yoga, Zumba. Um, you have to sign up for them, but those options are available. Um, apart from this, we also have something called the Night Spot um, the night spot is located in Duquesne Union. Um, they, in this spot, I would call this spot like a small gaming room um, with like snacks available. So what happens is that we get a notification saying we're giving out free snacks or we're hosting like a trivia and students from on, who are at least living on campus, because this happens after 9 p.m. usually, will go over there and make friends, have fun. I've had the opportunity to do that. It's amazing. It's a good, um, good way to spend my Saturday, I would say. Um, another thing is that the Duquesne police is extremely equipped. They're extremely alert. They want to be there for you. And it's, it's always handy to have Duquesne police's um, phone number handy. Um, I have it in my phone or I had it when I was on campus and they're just, they're extremely easy to talk to and um, get in touch with. Now we can talk about life on campus getting involved. So there are about 296 organizations within campus. Um, you can some of them are listed over here on the slide. However, you can access them through campus link on the Blackboard. Um, we have various clubs, descriptions, and they talk about the descriptions that the roles um, you might have as a club member. Um, they aim at understanding what, they also provide an understanding of what the club wants to do. Um, apart from this, we have um, an international students union where we come together and we celebrate cultural day. Um, from what I've seen and heard is that people come together, they dress up in their um, cultural outfits and um, they get food from their natives and it's a way of coming together, understanding each other's cultural and um, being more accepting. Eating on campus, this is extremely um, opinionated. We have a lot of options. Um, we have um, on campus, we have Starbucks, Chick-fil-A, Cinco Cantina, Incline, which is located in the Student Union. Then we have the Campus Market and Hogan Dining Hall, which is located in Duquesne Towers. Um, we also have other coffee shops on campus. I didn't know about this, so I'd like to share this, but um, when 
um, I came on campus. I didn't know that there was a small subway which is located below Brodie Hall. Um, so even though that's not a part of university's dining center, um, I thought it is good to know that we, we have a subway on campus as well. And um, another interesting thing about Hogan Dining Hall, which is the main eating um, spot here at Duquesne University, is that they have a meal schedule. It is pre-decided what will be made in the entire week. So students can have access to the schedule and they can go through and see, okay, this is available, I'm gonna eat here. If not, I will go to Simco Cantina or Chick-fil-A. So there's a wide variety of options and it is student friendly. You have access to what you wanna eat, what you wanna know, everything is extremely convenient. For people living off campus, you can still have access to these eating spots, especially Hogan Dining Hall. Um, and in case you want to know what's going on, what they're cooking, um, do I want to eat there today, you can simply access them on Duquesne Dining website and figure out if you want to eat there. Um, they have a lot of options. Um, I'm from Middle East. I've had, they, they make Middle East food too. Um, I'm Indian, they make Indian food too. I've had the chance to eat coconut curry. It's extremely good. Um, they also have vegan and vegetarian options. Um, we also have a section for, um, for allergy free food. So what they're basically trying to do is making sure that you're comfortable. So the dining um, on campus is extremely, extremely convenient and helpful and is student friendly. Thank you, Orja. You're making me hungry. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so we have um, a web we have an app called CrocQ, and the best thing about this app is that it keeps you up to date on what is happening around on campus. So, for example, um, School of Pharmacy is hosting a study, and they want participants. They will put it up on CrocQ and on this app and you will have access to it. If it's interesting enough, you can participate. There are prizes. Um, sometimes they give out Amazon gift cards. Sometimes it's Aldi, um, Target, Giant Eagle. So CrocQ is a handy app to keep. Um, Duquesne University is extremely sports friendly. Like Megan mentioned, Pittsburgh focuses a lot on sports. We have three major sports team here uh, and Duquesne University completely um, mimics what happens in Pittsburgh. Um, we have a football team, a women's basketball team, um, and they play cross country too. And um, we have a swimming team as well. We have a swimming pool located right at Duquesne Tars, which is access accessible for students. Um, we have men's basketball team, football team, soccer team, tennis team, and track and field. We have um, a track on campus. Students go for a run, um, and um, it's extremely accessible, and you can always enroll for sports on campus still. This is the Duquesne University map. Um, when I first came to Pittsburgh, when I first came to Duquesne University, I had no idea where I was going. We have the academic walk, which is straight um, from the seven learn living learning centers to school of uh, education. And then we have a downhill. I had it mentally in my head, but I just couldn't figure out where I was going. And um, so this map came really in handy. Um, and like you can see how I spoke of, we have a track. It, it's explicitly out there, it's huge, it's beautiful. And um, keeping this map is extremely useful. I would personally suggest having a copy of it on your phone, at least for the first few days while you're new here in Duquesne University. And you can figure out where you have to go, how you have to go and how far you are from a spot. For undergraduate students, especially those that are freshmen, it is required for them to stay on campus for at least the first two years. And what sometimes there is a misconception that if I am living on campus, I may not, it might not be necessary for me to um, include meal plans, but it is important to have a meal plan while you're even on campus. This was just a confusion that I had, so I thought I'd convey it. 
But if you're living on campus, it is a requirement for you to have a meal plan in order for you to have a preference or to have a roommate um, of your preference, you need to enroll for um, housing before December 1st. And you can move in by December or by January 4th. Um, this is a tentative date. You can move in a little earlier than that, provided the university has accommodation available. Um, if you're arriving early on Pittsburgh and you want to move in a little early, Duke University allows that. You just need to send them an email and explain to them that I will be arriving a little early and I would appreciate if I could be on campus and therefore it, they will definitely con uh, consider it and it should all be fine. Graduate housing. Um, the reason it's called graduate housing is because most students prefer, graduate students, we're talking about masters and PhD level, they prefer staying off campus um, because it's extremely convenient for them rather than staying on campus. Um, the Duquesne University, there are a few resources mentioned on this slide, but Duquesne University has an, uh, um, a, a link, sorry, um, for off campus housing. Um, which I would say is better than looking at um, apartments.com or rent.com only because those housings um, option or uh, rental listings are completely worked upon by the Duke University. They've understood the pros and cons of living in that apartment and they've put it forward because they know it's convenient. So you can just go to Google and type Duke off-campus off rental listings and it will pop up and even the apartments.com is an easy and uh, it's not a bad way, it's convenient, but always trust Duquesne University is what I can say from my experience. So having access to that link and understanding rental listings and also um, the university will answer any and all questions you have. They give you a guide on how um, rental listings work in United States, not just Pittsburgh, but in or Pennsylvania, whole of Pennsylvania. What are the laws? What are the leasing agreement laws? How and when can you break them? Um, what, what can be done if you're uncomfortable in a house living? And um, if you're ever in this situation, you should definitely approach the team, the off-campus housing team, and they will be more than happy to help you. They're easily accessible through email, through phone. You can even walk into their room, uh, into their office um, that's located in um, level one of Duquesne Union. So finally, I want to talk about working on campus. But I just wanted to thank Orja. That was such valuable information to share. So thank you so much. Thank you. So Pittsburgh um, is a great place for finding job opportunities. Um, we're in the top 40 US cities with the strongest job markets. So we have a lot of technology companies coming into Pittsburgh, such as Google, Duolingo, and Uber all have headquarters here. And um, as I said earlier, we do have 20 other universities in Pittsburgh. So it's a very um, young city. We have also been named in the top three best cities for STEM jobs. Um, so if you are going to be a STEM major, this is a good place for you to come and work. Um, and as Orja mentioned, um, looking for housing is going to be um, definitely something that you'll want to do through Duquesne's resources and just sharing um, that the cost of living is very affordable um, here. So whenever you have a job, it's, it's definitely worth the money that you're making. So we do have some employment opportunities for international students as soon as you arrive. Um, so if you're an F1 student, you are permitted to work up to 20 hours per week um, while school is in session and then 40 hours per week during vacation periods. So you don't need permission from our office for on-campus employment, but there are some resources that we list online um, to look for. So I, for instance, I just had a student this uh, semester arrive last week. She's interested in looking for on-campus employment. So I was able to send her some of the listings on Duquesne's website. 
So eventually you'll want to do CPT or career practical training. And this is related to your field of study and it's usually um, part of your established curriculum in your program. So you have to be registered for credits when you participate in this um, CPT experience. So we usually call this an internship, a practicum, or a co-op. So the photo here is a, a photograph of Sebastian. He's a Duquesne alum who was a, an intern at the mayor's office in Pittsburgh. And of course, um, we talk a lot about uh, of a lot about OPT op optional practical training, and this is 12 month work authorization period that allows you to work off campus um, in your field of study. So our office, the Center for Global Engagement, must recommend OPT um, so that the United States Citizenship and Immigration Services can authorize your employment. So if you are a STEM major, they're still offering a 24 month STEM extension. So uh, that would be for degrees designated in science, technology, engineering, and math. Um, you're able to go beyond that 12 months of OPT. So make sure that you are prepared to know that you are part of this approved uh, list for the STEM extension. So we have a very strong Center for Career Development and their whole role in the center is to help students um, looking for jobs, preparing them to assist in their job search, um, or consider other advanced degrees. So you can meet one-on-one -on -one with a career development specialist and they're able to help you uh, look at jobs through your career exploration. Um, you can also think about working part-time or volunteering and they can help you look for that. Um, and then they also help you with resume and cover letter um, feedback. They'll do mock interviews where they invite employers onto campus to actually do an interview with you to help you prepare for what that would look like. Um, they do also host a lot of events for students. So on a monthly basis, they're hosting resume writing and mock interview workshops. They're doing internship sessions. Um, they're doing something called Career Cafe, where they talk about different topics related to finding positions. And then they also do job and internship fairs. So some big events that they hold um, are two career expos, one in September and one in February. And this is where um, employers come to campus and meet with students um, individually. So you can start to shop in a sense for uh, an employer that you would want to work for. They get to meet you and you have your CV um, or your resume on hand and you can hand that out to employers as well. So um, because of COVID, we have really started to utilize this resource quite a bit at Duquesne. Um, Handshake, it's our online system that assists our students and alumni with job search and internship, internship search. So employers go on to Handshake, they list um, their jobs or internship postings, and then you go on as the student and upload your resume and apply for positions directly through Handshake. So I just wanted to end with a quote. Um, Maria is actually our head of the Duquesne Cultural Ambassadors. She's our uh, president this year. And she said, Duquesne has a strong sense of community. It truly feels like a home away from home. And this is something her fellow Colombians value. So one thing I wanted to point out, this news came out yesterday, is that we have made an adjustment to our spring 2021 semester calendar. So uh, we are going to begin classes on Thursday, January 21. Um, the semester will be the same uh, amount of time, so they've taken away our spring break. Um, so we'll end on Wednesday, May 5th. So this updated calendar um, is part of our Duquesne academic calendar. You can easily go online and search um, Duquesne University academic calendar and pull up this link. So just as I mentioned about Maria, um, 
We do have a page with all of our cultural ambassadors and our international student organization members um, who are willing to connect with you. So if you have questions, please go on this page. Um, it's duq.edu slash faces of Duquesne. And you can read the student's profile, um, see what program they're in, any languages that they speak, and then email them um, to ask them questions that you may have about coming to campus. So I know Orja is on Faces of Duquesne, um, so it would be great for you to reach out to a student and ask any questions that you have. So that is the end of our um, presentation today. If you have any general questions, you can email me after this webinar. Um, my email address is evangelistm at duq.edu. And then for immigration specific questions, Mary Beth Morris is our immigration advisor. Her email address is morrism4 at duq.edu. So I'll leave that slide up in case you need to copy down our email addresses. And at this time, if there's any questions, you can um, type them into the chat for myself or for Orja. Um, and we are happy to answer them. Okay, everyone. I hope that you all have a great evening ahead. Um, and if there's anything that I can do um, to answer questions before you arrive, please let me know. Um, again, thank you, Orja, so much for joining us today. It was so great to have your perspective. Thank you. Thanks, everyone. Bye-bye.